everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Owen shawl. So to tell you a little bit about the construction of this shawl, it is a rectangular shawl. You start at the bottom edge, you work all the way up and around your neck, and then down to your other side. So it is a typical rectangular shawl. Your cast on or your starting foundation row will be uh, where it will hit you in the front of uh, front of your body as if you were wearing say a scarf that's that's how the pattern will follow it will start at that front part of your body go up around your neck to the other side um, so this is the pattern uh, that I wanted it to be in if you want to do yours lengthwise and do your full length of your shawl and then go up from there, that's totally up to you. Uh, it's just more of a starting foundation. So this pattern is uh, in multiples of eight plus six. So you would start your foundation chain with a multiple of eight and then add six once you get your multiple of eight. For my shawl, I chained 88 and then added the six stitches. So I will tell you the measurements of my shawl. My shawl is about 24 inches wide and 70, 76 inches long. So it is a good size shawl. There are several ways to wear this. I'll put a picture in of the ones that I could uh, shoot on my mannequin. Um, and then from there, I'll kind of try to explain and or put other pictures in. Uh, maybe maybe drawings or whatever I can find that could uh, help you know how to wear this more than just as a shawl. So if you wanted to make two panels identical, you can make a ruana out of this and then just sew up the sides and the front and back. That is an option. Um, I mean, it's a basic it's a basic rectangle right now, so you could you could do it you know, any way you'd like, and then go from there on how you want to to wear it or design it further. It's, it's a pretty basic starting point for a pattern. And then I, what I like to do is I like to have patterns that will suit any yarn and any hook that you have so that it's not so necessarily um, crucial about gauge. Gauge um, for this is not crucial. I, like I told you the measurements of what I had made mine, I used a 4.5 mm hook. And the yarn that I used was from, oh my gosh, this was from years ago. I, I was subscribed to Knit Crate a long time ago. And, um, oops, didn't mean to hit the camera. This was uh, what I got in one of the Knit Crate boxes. And I, you know, blue is, that is my jam. So uh, this one was called Night Perfect. Like I, I just drooled over this when I got it. It is, uh, it is a, a lightweight or a size, you know, three DK, and uh, it is seventy percent superwash merino, twenty percent silk, ten percent cashmere. Uh, love this colorway. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So I bought five of these. What is the yardage in this? 329 so I I had five I used two uh, no three and a part so this is quite a bit that I had left from the last one um, so we're looking at you're looking at quite a bit of yardage I, I mean that's a sizable portion left of my skein so you're looking at 329 times at least three. So if you're, if you're looking to have enough yarn of the same color, I would shoot for 1200 yards just to be safe. Gauge depends on a lot of things. It depends on the yarn you're using, the, the weight of your yarn, your hook, how you crochet. I, it's so hard to say gauge is and then put in what the gauge is. Gauge is only like if I measured this right now and told you what the gauge was for the pattern repeat, that is just my gauge. And then you would have to spend your time trying to figure out how to get exactly that gauge. 
with this project, it is not that important to get my gauge uh, to get the size. I mean, it really isn't. This yarn, I, I actually washed and blocked the shawl and pinned it out. So it, I mean, this is after washing and blocking and I have 24 by 76, but it really depends on how you want to make yours, what hook you want to use, what yarn you want to use, what your yarn is made of, yada, yada, yada. You probably heard this a million times before. So I'll just say gauge is not important and you can just start off going. <laughs> Um, I did not put any edging on this shawl. I thought it was beautiful as is. This is going up one side and this is the bottom edge here. So it has a little bit of a wave to it because of the shell stitch in it. And I thought that was beautiful. So I did nothing to it. I considered it, but I thought it is uh, so delicate that I did not want to bulk it up with more stitching so i i left it i love it you you can do whatever you would like on your edge and um, be creative the way you want to be so i will use a different yarn because variegated yarns especially dark ones are very hard to see on camera so i'm going to go ahead let me turn my other light on here see if that helps and i am going to use some ice yarns that i have it is, it says it's a lightweight three, but it's, it's a heavy light weight three. 50% um, acrylic, 50% polyamide. This is softly baby. And this is the medium pink that I bought. I have a light and a dark, but this would be the medium pink and it looks pretty light, but compared to the, the lightest, it is not very light at all. So I'm going to use that yarn. I'm going to use a 4.5 mm hook and like i said we will need to do multiples of eight i'm not going to make an entire shawl so i will just do sample size once you get your multiple of eight that you want uh, you will add six chains to the end of that so i think what i will do is probably go ahead and do i'll do 24 plus the six so I'm going to chain 24 plus 6. I feel like it's really dark in here today. I'm not really sure why. Let me try to adjust my light here. It seems so shadowy. I guess that's a smidge better. I have my 24 stitches here and then I'm going to chain six more. Okay, so I have my 24, which is a multiple of eight plus six. So for row one, we're going to double crochet in the sixth chain from the hook. So we're going to count. Not the one on the hook, but one, two, three, four, five, six. You can get a double, double crochet in there. All right. We're going to skip the next two chains. So one, two. And we're going to put five double crochet into the next chain. So one, two. Three, four, and five. We're gonna skip two chains. One, two. We're gonna put a double crochet in the next chain one. So this one right here. We're gonna skip the next chain. We're gonna chain one. We're going to put a double crochet in the next one. So skip one, put a double crochet right here. 
and we're going to repeat that. So that's, that's our, that is our stitch repeat. So we're going to repeat this to the end of the row. Okay. We're going to skip our next two chains and we are going to put five double crochet in this next chain. One, two, Four, five. Okay, see the shells we're making? That's what gives us the wave on the bottom of the shawl as well. The up and down of those. Now we're going to skip two chains. We're going to put a double crochet in the next stitch or chain. When we go up rows, we will be having uh, stitches there instead of chains to go into. Chain one, skip one, put a double crochet in the next stitch or chain, and then repeat again. We're going to skip two chains, put five double crochets in the next chain. going to skip two chains, put a double crochet in the next chain. I'm fighting with my yarn here, trying to get more out. It's just giving me really tight tension. Chain one and put a double crochet in your last chain here. All right, let's take a look at it. Okay, so that is our row one, and it, it's very simple. So our row two is going to be what you will do for the entire pattern um, here on out. So once you do row two, you will have the entire pattern good to go. You just do it as, as long as you want to do it. Make your shawl as long as you'd like. All right, so let's get started on row two. more yarn here so I don't have to fight. Okay, so starting out on our row two, we're going to chain four. And that is going to count as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work. We're going to skip the next chain one space which is right here and put a double crochet in the top of the last row's double crochet. Now this pattern is very easy to find where you are in the pattern because it literally stacks on top of each other the whole entire way. So it's very easy to follow. So we're going to skip two double crochets. So one, two skip, we're going to put five double crochets in the top of this double crochet. So remember last row we did five double crochets. We're going to place five double crochets in every single set of double crochets that we come across. We're going to put five double crochets in that middle one, that third one. So five double crochets, one, two, Three, four, five. Okay, see how that stacks on top of it? Now we're going to put a double crochet in the top of the double crochet from the previous row. Chain one, put a double crochet in the top of the other double crochet from the previous row. We're skipping that chain one space there. And then we have another set of five double crochets here. So we're gonna do five double crochets in the third double crochet from the previous row. Okay, 
Moving on. Now we're going to do a double crochet in top on the top of the previous rows, double crochet. Chain one, skip that chain one space, put a double crochet in the top of the last row's double crochet. Then we have our last set of five double crochets and we're gonna skip those two and put five double crochets in the top of that third one. I am fighting with my yarn again. This yarn is really soft. <laughs> okay. So we have our five double crochets. We're going to put a double crochet in the top of our previous rows, double crochet, chain one. And now we have the, the, remember the chain six that we added to our foundation row? This is that, but we don't want to put it here because we need a chain one space here. So we're gonna do, pull it apart a bit, take a look at it. This is a chain. So we're going to do a double crochet in the top of this. So that would be your fifth chain. Okay, so this yarn is acrylic and uh, it doesn't, I mean, it's partial acrylic, but it doesn't, um, it squooshes up. So it, it's not very defined as far as how it looks, but you can see that this is going to take shape and very easy to follow. So every single row from here on out is row two. So every single row, we are going to chain four. That counts as our double crochet chain one. And we are going to put a double crochet. We're gonna skip the chain one. We're gonna put a double crochet in the top of the previous rows, double crochet. And then we have our set of shells again, and we are going to skip the first two double crochets and put five double crochets in the top of that middle or third double crochet from the previous row. And we're going to put a double crochet in the top of the previous row's double crochet. I have a piece of hair here. I'm sure you can see it better than I could. I got the camera and stuff in my way. Chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet. Okay, and then we're on to the next set of shells or um, double crochets. I guess you could call it a large shell. Um, and then we're gonna repeat that to the end of the row. So we do five double crochets in that middle or third double crochet of that set of five double crochets. And this is such an easy pattern. This would make a great baby blanket actually. And I never had thought of that until right now using, <laughs> using this light pink yarn double crochet in the top of the previous rows, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet from the previous row. But yeah, this, this yarn is um, so soft. It's called Softly Baby, so it does live up to its name. It is one of the ones that I bought from Ice Yarns that I really, really do like. And I think this would be a gorgeous baby blanket just gorgeous. Did I get five there? Yes. Double crochet in the top of your double crochet from the previous row, chain one. And then we're going to make sure that we're leaving a space for a chain one on that and then double crochet in that. So that's a chain four. So the chain four is, remember I said at the beginning of the row, the double crochet chain one that's our chain one we need to skip. And then we need to put it in the top of the, uh, the third of that chain. So that is how it's going to work up. So if you are looking to make a scarf for a gift, this would be a great size actually. Um, 20, 24 stitches plus the six. 
that that's a nice that's a nice width let me grab my measure tape measure grab my tape measure and take a look that's about seven inches so like I said you could do a baby blanket that would be absolutely beautiful I really like the stitch I think it's gorgeous and very versatile uh, you can make up a shawl uh, or like I said you could create a Rulana a baby blanket you can do you can pretty much do anything that you would like to with this you could even make a hat if you would like to make it as long as the uh, circumference of your head and then sew it up the back and uh, do do a ribbing on the bottom part here that could be a hat just cinch the top up when you're done so essentially you'd have a long rectangle sew it in the back and then cinch it at the top and do the do the band and you'd have a cute hat so yeah i i think that you'll really enjoy making this this is a great project to do while you're watching your favorite show or movie something that doesn't take a lot of concentration like I said you can pick up your work and know exactly where where you are and what you need to do that is why I enjoyed this project so much and I've actually had this shawl done for months I want to say at least at least four to six months I have had this shawl done and I just have not had time to record videos uh, tutorials tutorials so uh, that is why I am catching up now with uh, other tutorials as well of projects that I've had in my brain and, um, and or finished and couldn't share with you until now. So grab whatever yarn you have, whatever hook you want to use and start, start making, start enjoying just making something that's it's not mindless because you have to have a mind to do it. But it is so comforting to just repeat a single row over and over and over. It, it's really, that's what I find this craft to be the most enjoyable other than creating designs. The repeat patterns, the repeat rows and patterns makes it a very soothing craft to have. So go make yourself a shawl or someone you know a shawl or someone you know anything that you'd like, but give this stitch a try. Maybe you'll enjoy it. I do appreciate you watching. I will insert some photos here of pictures that I have taken on my, my mannequin that does not have a head, but uh, it's about a size extra small, I wanna say. And uh, the shawl that I made was not made for that mannequin it was made for me and so just keep that in mind it is very drapey on that mannequin because it is oversized so I will insert pictures to help you uh, decide how you would like to to wear the shawl once you have it worked up so thank you every everyone for watching I appreciate it you can like subscribe do as you wish and until next time guys